It is showdown Saturday in the Big Ten Conference. Two huge games that will most likely decide both divisional races and who will be playing in the Big Ten Championship game come Saturday, December 19th. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Locked On Big Ten Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Ben Stevens. It is Friday, November 20th, and week five of Big Ten football is possibly the biggest weekend of the entire schedule. And here to preview all six games of this Friday and Saturday night slate is Lucy Rodine. She's the host of Sports and Jokes with Lucy Rodine, aptly named, and one of our favorite podcast guests here on the Locked On Big Ten Show. Lucy, it is great to have you, and what a perfect time to have you. The midway point of the Big Ten season in Week 5, showdown Saturday, trademark pending, as I told you, will decide <laughs> most likely what we have from the East and the West Division in the Big Ten Conference. I am so excited to be here. I think we're finally at the point in the season where we kind of know who's good and who isn't good. And I've really been, you know, desperate for this point because it's been a really confusing couple of weeks. But we're here. I'm so excited for this weekend. It's the best weekend we've had so far in the Big Ten. 2020 has been very confusing. I think in these two biggest games, obviously we're talking about ninth-ranked Indiana visiting Ohio State, third-ranked Buckeyes on Saturday. We expected one of those teams to be there, probably not Indiana. And then in the other game in the Big Ten West, Wisconsin visits Northwestern, probably expected the Badgers to be there, but probably not the Wildcats of Northwestern. So we'll get into those games in just a moment. But before we do, as I mentioned at the top, only six games this weekend, because for the fourth straight weekend, we have a cancellation in the Big Ten Conference. Michigan State and Maryland will not play. It will be deemed a no contest. The outbreak of COVID-19 in the Maryland football program has grown. It was eight positive cases last week. It has grown to 15 new ones over the seven-day span. And seven staff members have tested positive as well during that seven-day span, including head coach Mike Loxley. So Maryland will miss their second straight game. Michigan State also will not play this weekend because of that. The second straight no contest for Maryland. The fourth straight weekend, we've had a cancellation in Big Ten football. Sad, but a lot of happiness on the horizon because it is a huge, ginormous, monumental, all the adjectives you could possibly throw in there, weekend for Big Ten football. So, Lucy, let's start with the matchup in the Big Ten East, the only top 10 matchup in the entire country this weekend. Ninth-ranked Indiana. Still weird to say. Ninth-ranked so Indiana visits third-ranked Ohio State. The Buckeyes are a 20-and-a-half-point favorite. The over-under total is 66-and-a-half. This is Indiana's first-ever regular season top 10 matchup in their school history. It is Ohio State's 99th. That is the background of what we have set for Saturday's huge game that will most likely decide the Big Ten East race. So, Lucy, as you see it, is there a chance? Obviously, that's a big spread. Indiana might be able to cover that. But is there a chance the Hoosiers can pull off the most – biggest upset in their entire football history. I would say that in this season, there's always a chance, but I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening at all. I think this game is, I think the spread's pretty much correct here. Uh, Ohio State, I foresee, you know, beating Indiana, maybe not by, you know, the full like 21 point spread, but by at least two touchdowns. Not that Indiana's bad. We all know Indiana's good, and they've shown that they are an impressive team, but they've shown they're an impressive team against Penn State, Michigan State, and Michigan. Those teams are bad. Those Which would are- normally, in a normal year, would be great. You'd be yeah, like, okay, absolutely. Indiana really is here. They're really here to play. But those teams are not good this year, and we thought they were good at the time. Well, not Michigan State. No one thought Michigan State was good. Uh, but we thought Michigan and Penn State were good at the time. And it's not to discredit Indiana – you know, they are good. And just the the way that program has risen this year and the past couple of years is so impressive. But Ohio State is not Michigan State. They are not Michigan and they are not Penn State. They are a different level. And I just don't think that Indiana has just the, the raw talent they need to beat Ohio State. I think that game is, is going to be a blowout. I wish it wasn't. I think it would be so awesome if Indiana won and kept or even kept it close or anything like that. But I just don't see any way that Indiana wins this game. So do you think IU covers, though, the nearly three touchdown spread? No. Oh, no, Lucy Rodin does not. History would agree with Lucy. Ohio State has won 25 games in a row. The last time that Indiana in this matchup would have covered a 21 or 20 and a half point spread would have been back in 2015 when they only lost by seven. But the last four matchups have been decided by an average of 28 points or more. 
So Indiana has not fared well as of late against Ohio State, which is nothing against the Hoosiers. Nobody in the Big Ten plays Ohio State particularly tough. A key to watch in this game, in my opinion, is Indiana right now, average per game, leads the country of teams that have played at least two games in college football in terms of takeaways per game. They have 12 total on the year, and they have converted that into points, 51 points off those 12 takeaways. That IU defense has brought physicality, and they have been opportunistic. But Ohio State doesn't really turn the ball over. Only two turnovers so far this year through their first three games, both fumbles. And when you think of Justin Fields, who is in such command of that Ohio State offense right now, no interceptions this year, only 11 incompletions total. And he only had three interceptions all of 2019. And two of those came in the college football playoff semifinal against the Clemson Tigers, whose defense, despite Indiana's success this year, is still better than where the Hoosiers rank. So my key is, can Indiana get Ohio State to turn the ball over? I don't think it happens. I think Ohio State will exert their dominance after an idle week they did not expect. They will come out and show out for the college football playoff committee. I think they win by double digits. I think they pull away late. I think it's 14 or 17 is that margin for Ohio State. But by all accounts, then Indiana would cover. So I think Ohio State wins. IU covers the spread of 20 and a half. And Lucy, if you're an Indiana fan, it is a win-win this weekend. If for some reason, for some ginormous reason, Indiana pulls off the most historic upset in its football program's history. Wow, you're excited. But also, you get to bet on your team with a 20 and a half point spread and root for the Hoosiers to cover, which most likely they will. So it's a win win, really, unless they don't cover and they lose, then it would be a lose lose. But regardless, you got to feel good if you're an Indiana fan going into this weekend. Well, yeah, I mean, you got to feel good if you're an Indiana fan, period. When was the last time you've ever been this happy? You know, basketball hasn't been great. So it's been a long time. It's been a long time since Indiana fans have enjoyed this. Uh, specifically, when you were talking about turnovers, if I'm correct, Indiana, 11 out of their 12 takeaways are interceptions. They are, uh, yes. And that's and that's the big thing is they they can get those interceptions, but they've been getting those interceptions against Rocky Lombardi, you know, Joe Milton, who has, you know, been very disappointed the past couple of weeks and right. Tanner Morgan, you know, they're not just in fields quality. And so I totally agree with you. I don't see Indiana, you know, being able to create those takeaways because they have a you know, they have a good defense. They have a solid secondary that can create takeaways. But Justin Fields is is a different ball game again. It's truly it's just it'll be fun. It'll be right. fun. And I think everyone wants Indiana to win. Everyone right. does. Indiana is the Big Ten sweetheart right now, and that 100%. is truly lovely. I hope they keep it competitive through the first half. I think it will be. I think Indiana's offense has enough firepower to take advantage of some of those small, very small holes in the Ohio State defense. Michael Penix Jr., Ty Freifogel, the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week, has come on so strong here as of late. But as Ohio State starts to really exert their influence later in that game, I think they pull away. And I think the scoreboard might not indicate the competitive game we see, but Ohio State will win probably by at least two scores, maybe two touchdowns. I just don't think they cover. You bring up a great point about that IU secondary. Their trio of defensive backs, Tywin Mullen, Jalen Williams, and Reese Taylor, might be the best group in the Big Ten as we've seen it so far. So that will be a key, and I'm sure Tom Allen, Kane Womack, everybody on that Indiana defensive side of the ball is preaching, hey, if we get a turnover on Justin Fields, that is going to be huge for what it does for our psyche in this game. But Lucy and I both agree Ohio State wins. Lucy thinks Ohio State covers. I, I think Indiana covers. So let's move on over to the battle for the Big Ten West. Two unbeaten teams with two very different records. Wisconsin 2-0, and ranked 10th in the country. Northwestern. 4-0, ranked number 19th in the country. The Wildcats host the Badgers on Saturday in Evanston, Illinois. The Badgers, though, a seven-point favorite. The over-under total, small, only 44 points. Probably indicative of the fact that a lot of people think, as I do as well, this is going to be a classic, ugly Big Ten game where time of possession is key. How do you see it, Lucy? Oh, I mean, it's it's a Big Ten West football game. This is the Big Ten West football game. I... One, it makes me uncomfortable that Northwestern is at this point. Uh, I don't, I don't like it. I just, it feels wrong. Two, I've been preaching this that this may not be the ethical thing to do, but what mm. Northwestern should have done, gotten COVID. Mm. If Northwestern got COVID, game would have been canceled. Wisconsin wouldn't get to six wins. Northwestern would be a straight shot to Indianapolis at this point. Listen. I think the Wildcats and maybe other college football programs in this year could use some of that out-of-the-box insight. You know, they're maybe focusing on schematics and X's and O's right now. You bring in Lucy Rodin, she gives you this perspective, just something at least to put in the tickler file. Not like you have to do it, but somebody should ask the question maybe, right? Yeah, 100%. And I mean, like, what are you going to say? That no, like, it would, I bet someone on your team has COVID. At least one person on your team has COVID. Come on. 
Like, Maybe. This is... I mean, it's a large numbers, large yeah. numbers across the country, large numbers in a football program. So maybe just based on the stats, you never know. It's, I don't know why no one else has thought of this. I thought of this the sec, like literally, I've been thinking about this for weeks. Like you could <laughs> easily screw Wisconsin over here easily. And Northwestern would just be straight shot. It's not ethical, but mm. it's 2020. No one's going to remember. Who cares? Right. You know? Yeah. It's just going to be like, oh, another college football game that was canceled in 2020. Exactly. That's how it goes. Okay, so assuming that Northwestern <laughs> does not pull this route by Saturday's kickoff at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, how do you see the game playing out between the Wildcats and the Badgers? I've been impressed with Northwestern so far this year. I mean, how could you not be there 4-0? Uh, Great at, like, the Big Ten West is, you know, their wins over Nebraska, their win over Maryland, unreal. I still – still doesn't make any sense to me. Um, obviously, they, they beat Iowa, but – I was waiting for you to bring that up. I don't really want to talk about it. I don't really want to talk you about it. You brought up like Maryland and Nebraska. And I'm like, okay, but is she going to mention week two or no? It's not, it's whatever. Um, <laughs> whatever. It's fine. I'm totally over it. Uh, but when it, <laughs> when it comes to Northwestern and Wisconsin, I know we've only seen Wisconsin twice. And granted, we've only seen Wisconsin against Illinois and Michigan. But just the level of dominance against both of those teams is – is unreal. I think Wisconsin's the most well-rounded team in the West, if not the Big Ten. Graham Mertz, obviously he wasn't perfect against Michigan like he was against Illinois, like literally perfect. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I am so bought into that system, and I think what Northwestern's done is impressive. I just don't see a way that their defense can stop Graham Mertz, can stop that Wisconsin offense, and Wisconsin's defense is so solid. And Peyton Ramsey's not a bad quarterback, but I don't think he's great enough to know put up really good numbers against Wisconsin's D. So I'm picking Wisconsin in this one. I still haven't decided whether I like really think this game is going to be ridiculously close or a blowout. I think there's mm -hmm. no in between. Um, and I still don't know what I think it's going to be because I think Wisconsin is so good, but also like Northwestern always seems to have a little bit of fight in them. Mm -hmm. And it's also at Northwestern, which I think is yeah. a big advantage for Wisconsin. Um, just because you that's do. Yes, because oh, I'm about to drop a stat on you that you're not going to like that. you. Just oh, God, <laughs> I just Ryan Field is mm. the least intimidating venue in college football. It is. I mean, if there were fans here, I still think it would be huge advantage. Wisconsin. Oh, because huge, huge, huge advantage. advantage. Like it works out better for Northwestern that there aren't fans this year. I, but I, I would agree. I still just think Ryan like Wisconsin. I just. I think this is Wisconsin's game. I think it's Wisconsin's game. And the more I talk about it, the more I think it's going to be a blowout instead of a close game. But I just don't – I don't trust Ryan Field. Granted, I've only been there once. I'm never going back. I could just go to my high school stadium if I wanted to do that. Oh, burn. Burn mm -hmm. Northwestern. Burn. I'd love to do it. This game originally, on the first iteration of the Big Ten schedule, of course we are now on number three, was supposed to be played at Wrigley Field in the early part of November. That, that would have been, been so cool. That would have been, first off, so cool, but also 75% Wisconsin fans. Like, oh, it would have been yeah. a home game for the Badgers. Thankfully, like you mentioned, for Northwestern, it is not. And Northwestern has played Wisconsin very well in Evanston. This is really? the stat that I mentioned I was going to drop. In the last six trips that Wisconsin has made to Evanston, Illinois, they are just one and five. I don't like that has stat. Won five of the like last six. Stat. I'm just saying what like has them. happened outside of Chicago in Evanston, Illinois. This is going to be an ugly classic Big Ten game where defenses are going to be the calling card. They have the top two defenses do Wisconsin and Northwestern in the Big Ten Conference. Nationally, they are also in top ten. Wisconsin, fourth in the country in opponents' points per play. Northwestern, seventh in the country in opponents' points per play. Who is number six, Lucy? Is it Iowa? It is. It is Iowa. There Figured you go. So Iowa. Iowa also a very good defense. But as we focus Just back on the battle of the Big Ten West for Northwestern and Wisconsin, two really great defenses. The difference that Lucy brought up is one I agree with. Where is the difference in this game? I think it is Wisconsin's offense that, despite having a smaller sample size, has looked really good this year. They lead the Big Ten in rushing offense. They put up 341 ground yards against Michigan last week. Four carriers of the football on Wisconsin's team last week had 65 or more yards. A very balanced attack. You saw the freshman Jalen Berger get involved. Nikia Watson looked good. Garrett Groshek was dealing with COVID issues. He might be back this week as well. And PFF ranks Wisconsin's offense the seventh best in the entire country. Wisconsin has that potential to put up points where I don't think Northwestern has quite that explosiveness or that efficiency on the offensive side of the ball. That all being said, it comes down to the fact this will be an ugly Big Ten game. This series history is so close. Despite the fact of where the game is played, they have split the last six matchups. I don't think this game is more than a score. 
I think Wisconsin could win by seven, and that would be a push as the line stands right now, but I'm thinking more of a three- or four-point game. Wisconsin wins, but Northwestern covers, and due to that head-to-head tiebreaker, the Badgers would be in line to be the champions of the Big Ten West and move on to Indianapolis for the Big Ten title game. It is going to be so close, though, on Saturday. It is going to be so, so close. Yeah, see, that's my thing, is I either think it's like exactly what you said. It's a, it's a three- or four-point game, but I'm still – like my my thing, what's different between Indiana and Wisconsin is Indiana hasn't played like phenomenal opponents and neither has Wisconsin. But I believe that Wisconsin has just looked so much more convincing against right. these bad opponents. And so this is obviously the first time we're seeing Wisconsin play a team that, you know, has some quality to it, that can win some games, that's impressive. And so uh, that's where I'm, I have the biggest question mark is – this is their first quality opponent. Is Wisconsin just going to continue what they did against Michigan and Illinois? I wouldn't be surprised if they beat the literal crap out of Northwestern. But also at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a three or four point game. No matter what, I think Wisconsin wins. I just think Wisconsin is all around just better. And that's why they win this game. I mean, a lot of people can say, okay, you've played bad teams this year. Kudos on your wins. But when you go out like Wisconsin has in their two games and beat Illinois 45-7 to in the season opener, and then last week hand Michigan their worst loss ever at the big house, 49-11, to that is very impressive, dominant stuff out of a football team that is still very much in the thick of the discussion for the college football playoff. Both of these games on Showdown Saturday will play a huge role in how the CFP is decided. So... Showdown Saturday, Lucy and my picks are in the books. You know all about it. The previews, the breakdowns against the spread, winners, straight up, outright totals, all that good stuff for Showdown Saturday. Now we focus on the four other games of the Big Ten weekend. We are going to go in reverse chronological order, and we will start with one of those opponents that Wisconsin made look very, very bad. That would be the Michigan Wolverines, who sit at one and three. They have lost three straight games. This week, they try to buck that trend when they head on the road to New Jersey and take on Rutgers. The Wolverines still a 10.5-point road favorite, the over-under total 54.5. Lucy, what is happening with Michigan? Um, Jim Harbaugh is happening with Michigan. I, I have a little stake in Michigan Twitter. I'm, I'm like half in, half out. Okay. They know what the problem is, and the problem is wearing khakis and a visor. <laughs> And we know who it is. It's Jim Harbaugh. And the thing is, I don't see Michigan getting any better throughout this year. Like, they're not improving their defense. Oh, my God. Their secondary, I I just haven't seen a secondary that is so bad at making plays on the ball. Like, they're so – and it's just weird. That's not Michigan. And, I mean, it's it's Harbaugh. Everybody with eyes knows it's Harbaugh. Um, But he's not leaving until – I don't think they're going to let him go midseason. That's just not Michigan style. But – right. The nice thing is, is there is nothing better for a team that is, you know, on a downward, you know, trend than playing Rutgers. Mm -hmm. We wanted to believe Rutgers was back after that Michigan State game. Oh, I wanted it so bad. I I still want it so bad. But they're they're not back yet. Mm. Yet. Were they ever there, though? Back? They won a game. That's, right, true. that's back yeah. for records um, back within what it was like 21 straight losses. Just one win is really good for them. You know, take it. Uh, same thing for Michigan state. Just getting that one win against Michigan. The season's a success. Uh, Absolutely. So I think that Michigan is going to just annihilate Rutgers. I think it is going to be just a crazy blowout. Rutgers is not good. Neither is Michigan, but Rutgers is much worse, and I just think it's one of those things where, like, three losses in a row, this is the perfect time for Michigan to just beat the crap out of somebody, and I I think they're going to crush Rutgers. I can't believe I'm about to utter these words, but I was disappointed in Rutgers football last week. I thought they had a great shot to win their second game of the Big Ten season in just four games and beat Illinois, and they laid an egg, and that offense has not been very good this year. 11th worst in yards per play so far this season. That Scarlet Knights offense looks stuttering at times, doesn't look like they can do a whole lot with the football, and I love Noah Bedrill as much as the next guy, but it's just it's kind of stagnant right now on the offensive side of the ball for Rutgers. I can't pick against Michigan, although I think Michigan is terrible. I think Rutgers is just a bad team. They're not a laughingstock team anymore. They're just bad. Michigan is a little bit better than, like, flat bad. They're not good, but they are just – flat, bad, and I still think 10 and a half points, I would lay that with Michigan, and I think they cover the spread. If Rutgers does cover, 
like kudos. I don't think Rutgers wins this game outright. There is a chance they could cover, but I have to trust Michigan despite the fact we don't know who's going to be playing quarterback. Is it going to be Joe Milton? Will it be Cade McNamara? You bring up that defense that has been porous this year. They are the bottom five of every major defensive category in the Big Ten Conference. We know what Don Brown does. He loves to blitz and he loves to bring pressure and he trusts his secondary to play either tight man coverage or even in zone just to make plays. And they have not this year. It is a very inexperienced Wolverine secondary who is young and now is getting those lumps. And hopefully that helps them as they go through their Big Ten careers. But this year it is tough. One in three is the worst start in over half a decade for the Michigan Wolverines. But that being said, I do think they get win number two this weekend against the Scarlet Knights. And I do think they cover. So we now go to Lucy Rodine's area of expertise, the Iowa Hawkeyes, who somehow are only a two and a half point favorite over the only winless team in the Big Ten Conference. That being, of course, surprisingly, the Penn State Nittany Lions. Iowa, two and a half point favorite over under total 47 in Happy Valley this weekend. This one leaves me scratching my head a little bit because I think if you change the name of Penn State, Iowa would be a double-digit favorite heading into this game against an 0-4 team and the Hawkeyes on a two-game winning streak. Yeah, I the spread scares me because it makes me think that they know something I don't know. Right, always um, does. I hear you. And so it makes me very nervous. I think that the reason that Iowa is only a two-and-a-half point favorite, which is just garbage, by the way, um, it's because of the history of this this rivalry, whatever series with Penn state. The mm -hmm. last time Iowa beat Penn state, I was in sixth grade. They haven't won in 11 years. It's been a very long time. Penn state has had Iowa's numbers. They've won the last six games in a row. And I think that's the only reason that this spread is so, you know, small for Iowa. I don't get it. Um, but nonetheless, I think, I think Iowa's going to beat the crap out of it. Maybe not beat the crap, but I think it's going to be a, a, way more than a two and a half point, you know, victory for Iowa. Um, I would just say looking at Penn state, their defense cannot tackle. They mm -hmm. cannot tackle. I don't know what in the world. I mean, they, God, they have to miss Micah so much. Like their defense can't tackle it's, and that's where their biggest problem are is, is their defense. And obviously we have no idea who's playing quarterback. Sean Clifford was listed as number one on the depth chart, but probably shouldn't be. And so, there's just so many problems with Penn State right now, and Iowa's rolling. I mean, what, 35-7 over Minnesota, and that was a shutout. You know, beat the crap out of Michigan State. Obviously, they're terrible, but the Iowa offense is finally starting to get things figured out. Tyler Goodson is just running and mm -hmm. running and running and running, and Spencer Peters is starting to get a little bit more comfortable. Not as comfortable as we would like, but a little bit more comfortable. Iowa's going to win this game, and they're going to win this game big. I think you summed up this game perfectly because you hit on the two points that I completely agree with, mainly being that Iowa's offense is starting to roll and that ground game is looking so impressive. Over 225 yards rushing as a team for the Iowa Hawkeyes the past two weeks. Tyler Goodson is starting to look like the breakout star in his sophomore year. We all expected at least 110 yards in his last two games, two touchdowns in each of those. But balance with Makai Sargent, who has three scores in the past two games, Spencer Petras doesn't need to do a whole lot. And as we talked about in the Wisconsin Northwestern game, Iowa's defense is very, very good. Sixth in the country in opponents points per play against the Penn State offense that looks terrible right now. They brought over Kirk Shiraka from Minnesota, the guy that loves to run RPO and has the talent and the pieces to make that work. Sean Clifford has great legs. Obviously not having Journey Brown or Noah Kane is a huge hit. But Devin Ford is still a very talented sophomore running back, and they don't look like they can figure it out. They are 72nd in the country in EPA, expected points added per play, which is right there smack dab in the middle towards the bottom half of the entire country. That is not what we expect out of a Penn State team that has so much talent year in and year out. The Nittany Lions have never started 0-5 in their entire football program history. It will happen on Saturday. Iowa will win. I think they win convincingly, and I definitely think they obviously then cover that two-and-a-half-point spread. The last time the Hawkeyes beat Penn State, Lucy Rodine was in sixth grade. Do you remember what you were doing, and where was Papa Rodine? Were you guys watching the game at home? We were watching the game. I remember it was Adrian Claiborne had a blocked punt for a touchdown, and I still dream about that. Sometimes, like, I'll just be sitting there, and, like, I'm zoned out, and people are like, what is she thinking about? I'm thinking about Adrian Claiborne's blocked punt against Penn State in 2009. I'm thinking about it. It's uh, go ahead, no, go, sorry, been go a ahead. long time. It's been a yeah. long time. And I also have a cardboard cutout in 
the stadium. So I'm excited for that. I saw you do that. Is that for real? Are they going to allow that happening? So I have really good friends who are Penn State fans and they mm. thought it would be funny to, you know, buy me a cardboard cutout to put in Beaver Stadium and then Penn State's lost all their games. So they're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. So I will be there cheering on the Hawks. I'm wearing yellow in it. So it's not even like I have like a Penn State shirt on or anything like that. I'm going to look like an Iowa fan. One, I hope the broadcast finds you in the stands. Two, I would not be surprised if any of the Penn State fans that you mentioned go to the stadium, try to sneak in and just like punch the crap <laughs> out of your cardboard cutout and get it out of there to try to change up some kind of momentum for Penn State. I just don't think it happens this weekend. Oh, and five. Oh, isn't that crazy? That is terrible. That it's scares so me though. That's what there, scares me a little bit about this game. Is like, I mean, like. The two and a half point spread, you have to be like, what does Vegas know that I don't know? Exactly. You know, like what is happening? Because this should be eight and a half, nine and a half, ten, even. I don't know. I don't like it, but I do like it on the other hand, because I think Iowa will win and cover. So two more games left of weekend number five of Big Ten football. We go to the noon hour on Saturday, Illinois and Nebraska. Both teams getting their first win of the season last weekend. Nebraska, a 15 and a half point favorite at home in Lincoln, the over under total 59. Lucy, I feel like you don't like either of these teams. So if you want to make your answer here pretty simple, feel free. Yeah, I was, I would not be surprised if Illinois wins this game. I would not be surprised if Illinois wow. wins this game. I know I you just, don't like Nebraska, but that's quite a hot take. Like, I don't think Illinois will win, but if it happens, I will not be surprised. Obviously, Illinois is bad. They aren't very good, but Nebraska is not very good either. It's it's awesome to watch both of them be bad, um, but just for some reason, Illinois, you know, they got that that win against Rutgers, and obviously it came with a late field goal, so that's like momentum going. I just think that it wouldn't surprise me if that happens. I think Illinois covers. I really do. I think it's going to be closer than the spread indicates. I think Nebraska wins, but I wouldn't be surprised if Illinois did just because I have a feeling. I, there's literally no reason other than my gut's like, Illinois might win this game. Last year in both teams' Big Ten opener, Illinois should have won, but then Nebraska rattled off 15 points in the fourth quarter and came back from down two scores to win that game. Adrian Martinez looked great, but Adrian Martinez is no longer the starting quarterback, most likely for Nebraska. That will be Luke McCaffrey. And that offense, despite him giving them a spark early against Penn State, Still not the speed and space that we love to think of Scott Frost. And the defense stood tall. Listen, they had two huge fourth down stops in the red zone to win that game against Penn State. But they still allow the Nittany Lions to put up over 500 yards of total offense. In fact, they are allowing their opponents to put up over 436 yards per game of total offense against that Nebraska defense. Love and by no that. means am I saying Illinois' offense is good or even like, okay, they're 102nd <laughs> in the country, ranked by PFF, pretty stagnant. They're last in the conference in passing yards as a team is that Illinois offense. But the rushing offense isn't terrible. Fourth in the Big Ten Conference, Isaiah Williams last week, the true freshman quarterback who won Big Ten Freshman of the Week because he put up an Illinois record for rushing yards by a quarterback, 192 and a score in that win over Rutgers last week. Brandon Peters, though, is healthy now. After his bout of COVID, he looks to probably be the starter on Saturday against Nebraska, and he might not be quite the runner that Isaiah Williams is, but he still has good legs, ran for 75 yards against a really good Wisconsin defense in that opener. I think Nebraska wins and wins comfortably. I don't ever really think the game is going to be in jeopardy. I just don't think they pull away enough to cover that 15 and a half point spread. So I think Illinois covers, Nebraska wins. So one final game of weekend number five of Big Ten football, and it's tonight. Another edition of Friday Night Fleck, the third Minnesota Friday night game in the last four weeks. PJ has got to be happy they're done on Fridays because this has not gone well for the Gophers at all. <laughs> Minnesota hosts Purdue in the Twin Cities. Purdue, somehow another weird spread, only a two and a half point favorite. The over under total is 62. Lucy, this reminds me a lot of last night's Friday night game against Iowa when they were only a field goal favorite on the road against Minnesota. And I'm thinking Purdue's still a pretty good team. This seems pretty simple to me as well. Yeah, no, I mean, easily Purdue covers in this. I don't, I don't see this game being like close like that. Um, I would say, oh, my phone is ringing. All right, my phone's done ringing. So, That's fine. <laughs> what I would say is Minnesota's offense has just not looked like Minnesota's offense. Not what mm -hmm. we've come to expect at all. I mean, they put up seven points against Iowa, but let's be honest, they didn't put up seven points against Iowa. No. They didn't do it. It doesn't count. Um, I wish those timeouts. I just want to. Really I love the end of that game so that much, last man. That twenty oh. seconds. Oh, the, maybe the happiest twenty seconds of my life. Um, but no, their offense. Tanner Morgan just 
completely, I don't know what has happened, but he has just regressed so much from last season. Obviously, their running back is insane. He is so mm -hmm. good. And, you know, you still have Rashad Bateman, and that's always going to be a big advantage, but they're just not capitalizing with the weapons that they have. I don't think this game's going to be close. Um, I just, Minnesota's offense, their defense can't defend the run at all. And obviously oh. Purdue's not a good, you know, running team, but that doesn't matter. Minnesota's defense is so bad against the run that I could put up serious yards <laughs> against Minnesota's rush defense. So this spread confused me too. Maybe it's something I don't know again, but right. I, I think Purdue covers. I think this game isn't, isn't close. Iowa was my lock of last weekend because when they were a three point favorite heading into that game against Minnesota, I was like, am I missing so something weird. again? It was like, am I missing something here? But it turned out to be exactly what we thought. I expect the same thing tonight for the Boilermakers against the Gophers. The rushing offense is not great. Only three yards against that stout Northwestern defense last week. That was three yards as a team for Purdue in the ground attack. However, that passing offense is still at the tops of the Big Ten. Aiden O'Connell has looked good. Dave Bell is still fantastic. Will we ever see Rondell Moore? Probably not, which is very sad for all of the Big Ten Conference. But Minnesota's defense is terrible. Fourth worst so in the bad. country by the folks at PFF. I've mentioned PFF a few times. They are very smart football people. If they say you are the fourth worst defense in the country, it's because you are the fourth worst defense in the country. Their pass defense is a little bit better, so maybe that negates some of what Purdue can do through the air. I just don't see it happening. I think Purdue can put up a lot of points in this game. I think they easily win. And if it's only a two and a half point spread for whatever reason, I think they easily cover. So that was our full weekend preview for weekend number five of Big Ten football, the biggest, most impactful weekend we could possibly see all year. Showdown Saturday, trademark pending in the Big Ten Conference. The two biggest ones, ninth ranked Indiana, third ranked Ohio State for the Big Ten East and for the Big Ten West. 19th ranked Northwestern host 10th ranked Wisconsin and getting you set for all of it with the insight and analysis that she brings, even looking beyond the X's and O's and possibly some unethical things yeah. is Lucy Rodine, the That's host of sports for. and jokes with Lucy Rodine, a very great podcast. If you're not listening to it to get your sport sports and your jokes, <laughs> you need to be listening to sports and jokes with Lucy Rodine. Lucy, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. This is always so fun.